The scripture says in chapter 1 of Mark, verse 35, In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. You think about when you get up in the morning, how much of the world crowds itself into your thinking. You have to get dressed, of course, and eat breakfast, and you've got to get in your car and drive down the expressway or somewhere and finally get to work. And as soon as you do, it's chatter, 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 chatter all the day. Or oh, the keyboard's flying all the day, and your mind is full. Then you've got to get back in your car, get back on the highway, and, uh, and dodge the traffic again all the way home. And when you get there, you undress and try to relax, and then there's dinner. I can fill up your day and not even know you. And so, where is God? Where is is God's private time with you? So where do we begin with our priorities? First and foremost, we must make certain that our top priority is God Almighty. Jesus Christ said it this way, Seek first the kingdom, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So many times we have it backwards. We are pursuing all of these things, and we've forsaken the king and his kingdom. So many times we want the things that God promises without doing what God requires in order for the promise to become ours. God told the children of Israel, if you obey my voice, if you heed my commandments, I'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, make me your priority. Be as consistent as you can. Give it everything you've got every time you get up to go. Because you have no idea when you're not going to get the chance again. It's the supernatural law of breakthrough. It's when you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again that you begin to see the mountain of impossibility begin to move. Prayer and perseverance go together. If you're going to become a person of prayer, you will be a person of perseverance. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. God has said he will give you everything you need for life and godliness. He said you don't have to worry about what you'll eat or what you'll wear or where you'll live. That God knows you need those things and if you'll seek first his kingdom, he'll give you all of those things. We flip it around and say, God, I'll seek your kingdom first when I get all of those things accumulated. Trust God on a daily basis to say, Lord, you met every need I have today. And I believe you'll meet my needs tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that with you now while I lay down to rest tonight. You know, in the Bible, the the day begins with sundown. And we we go to sleep while God begins the day. And the sun rises and you awake to join God in the day that he's already been diligently working at for several hours. So when you lay your head down at night, Lord, I trust you for all the provisions I'll need tomorrow. The time I'll need, the wisdom I need, the resources I'll need. When we talk about a life of prayer, we're not talking about once in a while. We're talking about that every day you sense the need, the desire, and the joy, and the awesome power that comes through praying, talking to the Father. That is, it ought to be a habit, something that is recurring in your life. Not just when you get in trouble, when you get in need, but because you love God because you're grateful for who he is and what he's doing in your life. Pray about everything, everything that comes up. Just pray. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray about everything. You don't have to be on your face or on your knees or in a closet or in the dark or with your eyes shut. It's good to have those set apart times with God. I have that every morning, but pray your way through the day and don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that God doesn't hear your prayers. You say, yeah, but the, the things that I've done wrong, why is God going to listen to me? Because you don't go in your name, you go in the name of Jesus. In the morning when you get up amidst the, your prayer or before you, when you're meditating, before you even get out of the bed, you should say, Lord, I just want you to fill me with your spirit today. You can't live a godly life unless you have a good prayer life because the prayer life keeps you connected to Almighty God, sensitive to His will and His purpose and His plan for your life. You don't pray, you won't live a godly life. How are we building our life? 
I spent so many years going to bed at night regretting what I spent my day doing. And I don't want to do that anymore, and I don't want you to do it. I want to go to bed at night and be proud of what I got done that day. You know, waste of any kind is sad, and certainly the waste of an entire life is the saddest of all. How many of you know somebody that has just wasted their whole life? I will not live like that. I am not going to get to the end of my life and have nothing left but regrets. And the only way that you can not have regret tomorrow is to do what's right today. Today, we need to start making right choices. If God is dealing with you about anything in your life and you know that you need to be obedient to him and you're putting it off for another day, I think tomorrow's maybe the most dangerous word that we have in our English language. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Well, what if Jesus comes today? I'm yelling to somebody, get up. It's time to get up and start doing something with what God has given you. Every day that you spend feeling sorry for yourself, it's a totally wasted day. It's completely unproductive. It does not help your future in any way, shape, or form. It just keeps you stuck in the same spot. We, we have to get over thinking that everything should be easy for us. I'll tell you a phrase I would like to see you get out of your collection of phrases that you use. Let's get rid of this statement. It's just too hard. But, but it's just too hard. You know what? Nothing that God leads us to do is too hard. See, it's foolish to think that we cannot do what God tells us to do and still have things work out right. How many things do you believe that God has put on your heart that you should do or not do, but you still have not obeyed him? Are you living your life on purpose each day, working toward the purpose you feel that God has for your life. And your purpose can change at different seasons in your life. Give yourself to what you're supposed to do in this season of your life. Bloom where you're planted and don't get so addicted to your plan that when God wants to change it, you won't let go of it and go do something else. And don't minimize whatever it is that God wants you to do right now. Don't minimize that. Knowing that he's in charge, it doesn't make any difference what happens how it happens, through whom it happens, for whatever reason, I know that God is in control and I can trust Him for whatever He allows in life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. He listens to you, you listen to Him. You obey Him, He guides you. There's an awesome sense of intimacy in a life that trusts God. And if you want to know whether you're a trusting person or not, ask yourself this question. What am I worried about? Whatever you're worried about is God's long, awesome finger saying, you're not trusting me at this area of your life. A godly life is a life of trust. And when you begin to focus on God, here's what happens. Worries drift away, concerns drift away. Your, your mind is no longer contaminated with all kinds of things that do not do you any good at all. The wise way to live is to obey God then leave all the consequences and circumstances to God. It, it, you see, you have, to, you, have to choo you, you have to choose some things. You have to choose to go with them or with God. Have this or have God. Walk this way or have God's way. The reason we don't do things that are absolutely sacred, godly, awesome, life-changing, lifting habits is because we've decided to choose the world's way. You'll never understand or be able to enjoy life at its best until you surrender your life to Christ. You may be walking through a difficult season and there may be some very uncomfortable places in your life, but I suspect there's something you can be thankful for. We want to learn to give thanks to the Lord. It is a protection over your heart and your mind. Become good at being grateful. Be grateful for the people in your home. Be grateful for the people that live around you. Be grateful for the place where you can work, the people that you work with. I don't want you to spend this whole year talking about if. 
I want you to start this year and end this year saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you heard me. Thank you, God, that you have enough for me. Thank you, God, that you're making a way.